In this video, we will be demonstrating the false color features of the Manhattan LCD HD5 monitor. It is important to note, though, that the features listed in this video are also available in the following monitors. Before we get started, let's go over the false color key of the false color features of the Manhattan LCD monitor. As we see, this is a complete IRE listing, as we have 0, which is total black, all the way up to 108, which is total white. Now, when you read the false color key, colors show up differently, and this is how you use them to get proper exposure on your image. So white on the false color key is total black, because that's between 0 and 2 IRE. So this is complete black. This is uh, information that the camera is not able to record. Then we see blue and light blue. These are both uh, dark and uh, close to black, so these are going to be where you want your darkest shadows to be. And if you start seeing too much of the image in the light blue and dark blue, then you're going to know that this information is not going to be recorded very well. Then we have the dark, dark gray, which is 20 to 42 IRE. And again, this is where you want your darker shadows, maybe the side, dark side of somebody's face to be in. Uh, then we have 42 to 48, which is bright purple. 48 to 52, medium gray. 52 to 58, which is green. And then we have 58 to 78 light gray. This is where you're going to have most of your skin tones showing up. Uh, typically skin tones vary from 60 to 70 IRE, so as long as things uh, your skin tones are showing up as light gray, then you're going to have proper exposure. Then we move up to overexpose, which is dark yellow, yellow, orange, and red. If you have lots of yellow, orange, and red, then your image is going to be overexposed. So now that we have the key, let's go ahead and demonstrate some of these features. Here we have just a basic image. And we're going to go into the menu and select the false color. So we go over to advanced, scroll down to false color, turn that on. We hit menu again. We see that the false color has changed everything. Here we can see we have a very well exposed image as we have lots of light gray showing up on there. But let's go ahead and underexpose the image. So now we scroll down and we're just going to change the ISO until we see a lot of white showing up. We have a lot of white dark blue and light blue. So this is relatively easy to say, okay, this is an underexposed image. As we go in, we can change this back to where we were before. So now we start seeing the light gray coming in. And we see also the dark gray and medium gray in the background. So that's kind of where we want our shadows to be. So we can see the dark gray is where we want our shadows to be, and the light gray is where we want our properly exposed area to be. So say the surface of the sphere is going to be our skin tone. So that's what we want that to be exposed at. But if we go in and overexposed, now we start seeing a lot of green, yellow, red. This is overexposed. So if I turn off the false color, we can see that, yes, the image is well overexposed. This is not a usable image. So let's go and turn it back on and demonstrate what the underexposed image looks like. So now that we have lots of white and blue, what does it look like? Yes, we can see that is an underexposed image. This is completely unusable. So let's turn the false color back on. Now that we know that the medium gray is where we want it to be, we'll ISO up until we start seeing medium gray, lots of medium gray in the sphere. We'll turn off the false color, and there we go. We have a properly exposed image.